Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Both Marcus and Mark sent me the story and said, Steve, this caught our attention. How about you? Yeah, it's a good one. WECT.com reports, disgraced former police chief arrested after faking his own death. We've all been there before. Overdue homework assignment. You're going to get grounded. You fake your own death. <laughs> the man staged his own death in an apparent attempt to evade criminal conviction. Uh, the man's the former Chadburn police chief. This is all happening down in the Carolinas. Uh, who was the subject of a missing person search along the Lumber River this week. He was arrested in Horry County, South Carolina, early Thursday morning. According to the uh, county sheriff, the man is located at a relative's residence at an apartment complex on Watson Heritage Road in the Loris, South Carolina area. An incident report indicates he was trying to hide, submerged in a creek behind the apartment when authorities spotted him. I think it's a move right out of Rambo. He ran from authorities but was taken into custody after a brief chase and struggle at approximately 12.45 a.m. And as he is struggling with the police who are trying to arrest him, you've got to ask yourself, did the thought occur to him that I'm now doing to them what used to annoy me when people did it to me when I was a cop? We don't know. Meanwhile, his relative disputes claims that she's harboring a fugitive. She said she didn't know that her nephew had missed a court appearance earlier in the week. She said he called her Sunday night saying he was having marriage problems and considering suicide. Uh, she told him not to kill himself and said he could stay with her for a couple of nights, if that'll help you. She said she was shocked when authorities showed up at her apartment early Thursday looking for him. I was told different stories, but I do know, and I will state to the fact, that he is not no drug addict like they say he is. Columbus County Cops is doing him wrong. That's what she said of his legal troubles. Meanwhile, the man is currently being held at the Rubin Detention Center for Horry County. He's got 40 outstanding warrants. 40, that's 4-0. Four 40 outstanding warrants for failure to appear for a total bond of $1 million. He is facing dozens of criminal charges after being arrested in April 2021, accused of repeatedly raiding the Chadburn Police Department's evidence room and stealing a variety of drugs, cash, and firearms. In June of 2021, he was charged with embezzling $8,000 meant for a family whose child died following a battle with leukemia. And a lot of times, this happens where police officers look at that evidence room, they see all that cash in there and all that other cool stuff, and they go, you know, we took it from criminals. Uh, if we take it, it's a victimless crime, which of course is not the case, but that I think is how the thought process works. So... Uh, in August, he managed to post a half million dollar bond to get out of jail while awaiting trial, despite efforts by the DA to keep him locked up. Some suspected he was related to the bail bondsman who got him out of jail because they shared the same last name. But the owner of the company tells WECT, there's no blood relation to the best of her knowledge. And this was a standard transaction. After he bonded out, he was arrested again, charged with stealing catalytic converters from an auto repair shop. Uh, that he was working at as a mechanic. Court documents indicate the DA's office again lobbied to have his bond increase or revoked because he was a threat to the community. Uh, the judge didn't buy that, but but he's also a flight risk, we know now. <laughs> Hindsight being 2020. The uh, prosecutor also filed a motion to prevent him from using ill-gotten gains to post bond, but the judge said that became a moot point because a bail bondsman put the money up. He then missed a court appearance earlier this month telling the court through his attorney that he could not attend because he had COVID. He had COVID. When he missed another court appearance on Monday, his attorney informed the court that he was missing and may have taken his own life. And that's the kind of thing where I look at that and I wonder if the attorney was told that or was he piecing it together himself? Or why did he say that? Because it's not uncommon for an attorney to appear before the court and say, Your Honor, my client's not here. And if the judge says, well, can you tell us when he'll be here? The attorney will often have to say, I'm sorry, but I can't address that. Because they may or may not know something that they may or may not be able to divulge. But, but, the sheriff's office was contacted on Monday by North Carolina wildlife officers that had found an abandoned boat in the Lumber River near a hunting club. Wildlife officers were told that the man was last seen driving a truck found at the location and that the boat belonged to him. So deputies descended on the scene, and along with the sheriff and the special operations unit, uh, including the man tracking and dive units, 
And as the sheriff's office began to search the area, investigators spoke to his friends and family who were at the scene. Investigators began collecting evidence. Family members described the incident as a possible suicide. Among things found at the scene was a rifle with a discharged round in it, a boat, and handwritten letters. And we do not know what the letters say or contain, but the suggestion is they might have been suicide notes. Investigators quickly concluded, however, the evidence collected did not support a suicide scenario. The man is still missing, but dive crews searched the waters. They brought in tracking teams. They searched the wooded areas. Search and rescue crews conducted searches for three days, including several agencies assisting with aerial coverage, canine units, and sonar scanning. They are scouring this area looking for this guy, wasting tons of money. Meanwhile, criminal investigators were conducting a separate investigation on the possibility that this was staged. As investigators collected video from surveillance systems and conducted interviews, it became even more apparent that the scene on the river was, in fact, staged. So search crews combed the river for signs of his body. The U.S. Marshals and agents from the State Bureau of Investigation were chasing down leads that they'd heard he was still alive. And... Um, Somebody told the court that due to unusual circumstances, they should allow for the possibility that the man was still alive but had staged his disappearance. And on Wednesday, authorities received a tip that he's hiding at a relative's in Loris, South Carolina, and a judge issued a failure to appear order for his arrest. So they got the right to go grab him, and he was apprehended Thursday morning. The district attorney sent extradition papers down there to bring him back up because all of the court hearings are happening in North Carolina, but they grabbed him in South. If he waives extradition, uh, it could be Friday that he's returned to local custody. If he doesn't waive extradition, of course, that just drags things out. The Columbus County Sheriff's Office says the investigation is ongoing and that additional charges and arrests are likely. They're planning to have a joint press conference with the district attorney Friday at 2 p.m. So some people are going to ask, what's that extradition stuff all about? And you know that if you break the law, you can be arrested. And there are also situations where they can put out a warrant for your arrest. So somebody swears out a complaint, says you've done something wrong, a warrant gets issued, and the police are looking for you. Well, let's assume that you've been accused of something in one state, such as, oh, I don't know, Michigan. And a warrant is out for your arrest in Michigan. So you flee the state and you go to Ohio. And down in Ohio, somebody finds you and says, hey, this guy's wanted on a warrant up in Michigan. They confirm that, and you get arrested in Ohio. Now you're being held by Ohio authorities, and the allegation is that there's a warrant for your arrest in Michigan. But of course, those are two separate states. And so if you want to, you can often demand a hearing where someone's got to come into court in Ohio and prove that they've got the right to take you from that state to another state. And that would be to extradite you. And the same thing can also happen with countries. But countries is trickier. But, but with states, it's pretty straightforward. So somebody from Michigan would then come down to an Ohio court and put on the evidence to indicate that, yes, we've got a valid warrant for this guy's arrest in another state. And the Constitution says that the states have got to cooperate with each other, full faith and credit and all that, so that you can't just go across the state lines and say, I'm out of the state, too bad. So the states will cooperate with each other, but due process does require that somebody's got to come down there and, and make a good case as to why you can be taken from this state to another state. And most people, I, I suspect you did the mathematical study on this, I think most people waive the extradition because the extradition is not that hard to get, but it's time consuming. And so we've heard of cases before, somebody just dragging their feet will fight everything and force them to jump through all the hoops. But quite often they just wave it and say, fine, I'll go back. So we'll see what happens. But the headline's a good one because the disgraced former police chief arrested after faking his own death. And it turns out that there were also 40 outstanding warrants for failure to appear. And uh, he faked his own death, apparently, in an attempt to make them stop looking for him because they were going to come after him for those 40 outstanding warrants, which stem from stuff that disappeared from the evidence room at the police station while he was the police chief, and now he's the former police chief, and now he's in a lockup someplace 
thinking to himself, where did it all go wrong? So there you go. Marcus and Mark Center from WECT.com. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Don't be afraid to take risks. If you've got dreams that you've buried inside yourself, dig them back up again.